Good day everyone. This is my second time attending a webinar from Pels. The topic for this webinar is strategies for distance learning. This webinar talks more on the use of G Suite for education. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear us well? Mom Tani? Good morning. Is my audio clear? Um, yes. So good morning, everybody. Um, we are again your moderators. We are doing this regularly every uh, Friday. And we are really very grateful for your continuous support to the activities of the Philippine eLearning Society. Um, is my audio clear? Mom Penny? Clear my from audio? my end. Yep. Yes. Yep. It's clear. Okay. So this morning, we are, of course, um, again, very thankful that uh, we have a great speaker uh, once again coming from our support um, companies. Okay, we, we, we will be able to give us um, some of the resources that we can use to be able to prepare us for remote, remote teaching and learning. And as we usually uh, proceed with our session. We, of course, welcome everyone to our eighth um, webinar for this year. And just to give you a background, as well as um, for the sake of our presenter, they should know as well. Um, well, our presenter should know the profile of the webinar registrants, as well as um, our invited uh, speakers to be our uh, to be part of the synthesis. So for those who have registered today, we have about a 93.3% still coming from the education sector and about 3.9% is coming from um, the government agency. Okay. Well, of course, a small per percentage coming from the corporate as well as the non-government, which is not visible in the chart. Next here, we when um, you've uh, chosen education as your sector, um, we have the next chart here that shows um, that 62.7% is coming from the public education, while 37.3% here um, came from the private education. And in terms of the level of teaching assignment, here is again our last graph that uh, mentions that um, 36.2%, you're coming from the kinder to grade six, 33.6%, you're coming from junior high school, and 13.5% coming from senior high school. We have as well 15.9% uh, coming from the tertiary. So that's about the profile of those who are registered today. Okay, in terms of our webinar participation, um, of course, as part of our guidelines, you need to register using your full name. And then at the end of the session, um, you'll get a post-webinar evaluation link. You answer that, and that's the time that we'll be able to contact you again so that we enroll you in our online platform where you will, of course, um, get a copy of the recording and the certificate of attendance. If our... Um, speaker would allow the presentation to be shared. You will also be able to download it from our online platform. Now for the webinar proper. Um, so the topic of our presentation today is distance learning strategies 
with G Suite for Education and Chromebooks. So before Mom Penny introduced the speaker, um, these are the highlights of our webinar. So for one, we will focus on how we overcome the challenges associated with remote teaching and learning. We'll focus on how we harness the power of Google for education to be able to have, you know, a clear understanding of what distance learning and what are those digital tools that we can use. Uh, how do we conduct distance learning without home internet access? How do we engage our students? Uh, how do we find ready-made content or open educational resources um, and how to meet diverse needs of learners so at this point let me call in mom fanny who will now introduce our speaker hello good morning xin chao from vietnam so with more than a decade of um, marketing and sales um, managerial skills our speaker for this morning is an experienced marketing and sales manager skilled in developing and implementing marketing, communication, and strategic business plans and campaigns that produce results and increase sales and profit. She is also skilled in product and brand development, community development and management, training, sales management, business development, market research, and profiling. Currently, she is the supervisor for the implementation of Google for education in the Asia Pacific region. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, let us all welcome Ms. Eileen Apollo de Jesus from um, Google for Education, uh, Southeast Asia. Hello, <clears throat> good morning. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Uh, just to check before I proceed, is my audio clear? Yes, yes, Miss Aileen. Yes, okay. yes, Miss Aileen. Yeah, like possession. This is my first time actually using Blackboard, <laughs> but it's been a good experience. Good thing yesterday, like chair uh, walked me through how to use it. So let's see how I could share my screen. It can you guys see my screen now? Yes? Yes, yes Ms. Eileen. Ms. Eileen, yes. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Uh, ako po si Eileen Apollo de Jesus. Uh, obviously, isa po ako Filipino. And I'm actually based here in Singapore for the last uh, nine years working for Google. Some of you may know that uh, I used to work for Google in the Philippines back from 2006 to 2011. Mag-isa po ako sa Philippines nung mga panahon na yon. And for five long years, I was working from home. Can you imagine? Like, I worked for uh, a company like Google, uh, but for five years, nag work from home ako kasi at that time, wala pa kami office and <clears throat> i've been at google for uh it's pushing 14 years now and i've been around and uh, at some point i was given the option to choose you know between working for our education team or pursuing working for our developer relations team at that time <clears throat> when i had to make the choice the the option for me was very clear. I had to take the road less traveled at Google, which was specifically Google for Education. As early as 2007, I had been working with schools and universities to you know, start using our tools. And it was one of those early projects that really impressed on me that it was something that I could make a large impact on. And here I am, I've been part of the Google for Education team for, um, I think, almost five years now. I manage our adoption programs across Asia Pacific. And so I've been working with a lot of different countries, helping uh, ministries of education, helping schools, boards of education, 
to you know like learn how to use our platform and in the past couple of months <clears throat> things have been of course very different so i started doing our education response kasi para siyang crisis response diba itong pandemic na meron tayo ngayon and like one of my early issues was how do i teach teachers in Taiwan and Hong Kong kasi doon mas nauna yung uh, paglaki ng uh, like ng crisis at that time no around February and i had to figure out like how do i help teachers learn uh, and of course, syempre, hindi naman ako nagsasalita rin ng Chinese. So, I had to figure out, like, where could I get help uh, to teach teachers? And luckily, like, you know, for many years, I've been working with our communities. And these communities pitched in. They're called the Google Educator Groups. Uh, and of course, we have our professional development partners. They pitched in to help and they started to do these webinars. And in fact, in the Philippines, we've been doing uh, webinars as early as uh, the first week of April, even before Holy Week, to help teach teachers how to do these things. So for today, what I'll be covering are mostly the strategies that you can use for your schools uh, using our platforms, specifically G Suite for Education and, of course, Chromebooks. But if you'd like to learn more how to specifically use the tools Please head over, later I'll be showing some resources, please head over to the um, resources that I'll be flashing at the end of this presentation. So for today, what I'll be covering will be a couple of things that you could actually do in your school. Some of you may be like, you know, senior leaders, like principals, some of you may be like, head teachers or section leads and of course majority of you would be teachers who of course ang pinaka goal talaga nating lahat is to be able to help our students learn better and at this time which is a definitely an extraordinary time talaga naman mahirap Diba? Para kung sanay na sanay kayo magturo sa classroom, syempre isipin nyo, how do I bring my you know lessons online? So at Google for us, and the reason why I mentioned kanina that I work from home for five years, kasi at Google, the way we developed our platforms is to really make it easy for people to collaborate and engage online. Diba? Nagsimula kami sa search, uh, but our mission is to you know, put things in order to make it easily searchable and useful. So for today, what I'll be going through are a couple of strategies that you can use uh, specifically for your classroom. We certainly have a lot of resources online. You can go to teachfromhome.google um, to see more the uh, like specific resources that you can use. So let's start. The first thing that you need to do, of course, is with you staying at home, how do you actually reach out to your students? How do you engage your students? And for this section, that's what I'm going to go through for now. So first one is, of course, video learning. So right now we're in this video conference. We are using, I think, Blackboard, which I've never used before. It's good to experience using it as well. But at Google, we have what you call Google Meets. So I'm pretty sure majority of you probably have your own Gmail accounts. Those teachers from the Department of Education, you have your G Suite account. Uh, deped.gov.ph is in fact a G Suite for Education account. And for many, uh, you know, private schools, universities, uh, most of you also have your own instance of G Suite for Education. So one of the things that it has 
and the most important product at this time is what we call Google Meets. We used to call this Google Hangouts. Now it's called Google Meets. So what is Google Meets? Google Meets is basically Google's video conference platform. So when you use it, kapag ginamit niyo yung chat, kiklik niyo lang yung, yung video button or yung audio button. Kung gusto niyo, audio lang. And then it creates meets. So if you see the photo on the side, meron mga uh, pictures of those people who are joining on the conference call. So what does Google Meet do? So Google Meets help helps with video learning um, and what we've done until September 30, 2020 is to allow you know, schools to actually use Google Meets, the premium version for free. So what does that mean? It means you could actually record and save those videos that you run through Google Meets and if for example you have like larger meetings, you could have actually up to 250 participants in your Google Meets. So I'm seeing a lot of our Google certified trainers and Google certified educators in the Philippines have been using this also to train, you know, like train their teachers. And I know there are some SDS out there who have been using Google Meets also to meet, you know, with their school principals and uh, with like their leadership within their division. So up to 250 participants kasi you pwede mag-join sa Google Meets. But the regular one, like after September 30, your G Suite for Education account will revert back to the regular one, now up to 100 participants, which is still actually more than enough if you have a class of between 30 to 50 students, right? And the other thing that we've also turned on in the premium service, which is available for all G Suite for Education users, is in domain live streaming so let's say your uh university as big as university of santo tomas sobrang dami nilang students diba? but let's say for example they'd like to run uh, a live stream with all their students they could actually run that within their domain and they can have up to 100,000 participants. So kami sa Google, madalas namin to ginagamit because like for example, my team, the Google for Education team, we're a team that, that's found globally. There's probably at least one person from our team in every country. And oftentimes, like yesterday, nag all hands kami, this is what we use to be able to, you know, live stream to everybody across the company. And one good news, recently we announced that it's much easier now to create a Google Meets instance for your students. We've integrated it into Google Classroom. So if you use Google Classroom, you could just simply create, you know, a unique meet link for each of your classes so just you know try and play around with it uh, you can start with you know some people that you know and kung wala pa kayong g suite for education account you could actually use gmail okay another way to actually um engage with your students is interactive docs or what we call Google Docs, which is under Google Drive. So if you've never tried it, you could go to your Gmail account. On the upper right side, there are like nine dots on it. Just click on that one. And the different icons for the different um, apps that we have under G Suite for Education or even just Gmail will come out there and then click on Google Docs. So what you can do and the beauty actually of using Google Docs or Google Slides is you could actually engage with each other. I don't know, but 
like if you're as old as me, when I was a student doing my thesis, we did not have Google Docs at that time. And my thesis mates would had had to come to my home, usually at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning to bring the updated docs that they typed up in their own home. There was one instance, my thesis mate who lived in Valenzuela, he came all over from Valenzuela to Paranaque City. And in Abacho, like, I think he arrived 3 a.m. And dala pa niya yung computer niya sa bahay namin for us to be able to like merge all the new content that he had to the main thesis doc, which I own. And that's how we used to do things. But, you know, the beauty of using Google Docs and Google Slides is if you share it with, let's say, your students or your co-workers, then it's very easy to collaborate on the document. So, like me, I meet a lot of my colleagues and I've never met them in person, but we've been using Google Docs and Google Slides for many, many years. And through this, you could actually run class activities. So normally, when we training, kami, the first thing that we do is we open like either a Google Doc or Google Spreadsheet. And then we ask those teachers that we train, OK, can you just input first what you had for breakfast? And then we go through it. And then it's it's like a good interactive like starter uh, for doing training so that those who have never experienced using Google Docs or spreadsheets or sites can experience using it. So another thing that you can use also is, so let's say for example, you're doing like, you're doing your lessons using Google Meets and let's say you're using Google Slides. So there's one nice feature which I only discovered yesterday when I was reviewing this deck, um, is what we call Google Slides audience Q&A. So if you turn it on, on your Google Slides, then, you know, you can, the, the students or the people participating in your, like, lesson or your webinar can actually ask questions. And then, students can see it and react to the questions that are actually posted. So one tip that we could give about, uh, you know, like doing distance learning, teaching your st students online is if you have 30 minutes of instructional content. So like ideally, kasi, what you should do is to break it into six, five minute mini lessons yung huwag yung dire diretso kayo nag nag train which is what i'm doing right now actually because you need to give your students time to digest the material so like within those 5 minute mini lessons what you could actually do is you know break it have have some discussion time or like have some time where the students can do an activity. I've seen this done also in class uh, where teachers use, let's say, um, Google Slides, and then in between, they ask their students to collaborate on a certain project. And then, like, like, I got really surprised when I saw that class demo the students like work really fast. So, but this, you know, allows you whether you do it online or like in class, this allows you to teach the value of collaboration with your students. Okay, so one of the things that you need to do also is to pause often to check for understanding. So, as much as I'd like to do it now, we are doing a webinar and I'm supposed to just like go through this whole content for you. But something that you need to remember is when you're doing distance learning, and of course, even during actual face-to-face -face class is you need to understand whether your students get what you're really 
talking about. So in between, you know, like doing lectures, you could actually pause, like run some light, you know, quizzes using Google Forms, or you could actually also utilize Google Classroom for assignments or use utilize Google Classroom stream to actually like generate more discussion with your students. And I must say, because I'm an introvert, when I was a student, it was really very hard for me to raise my hand and like do class discussion. Mahiyain talaga kasi ako nung sujati ako. And I never liked people looking at me. And, but what, you know, really transformed me was when my teacher, and this was already when I was taking my master's, used Yahoo Groups. <laughs> yes, Yahoo Groups. Um, when he used that to generate more like online discussion with within the class and then my professor like talked to me and said like wow you have really great ideas and i see that the online platform is really like bringing it out from you and from there like that professor like took particular notice of me and during class he would put me on the spot and call me to just talk and eventually you know i got comfortable because that helped me gain more confidence for myself and I think if that professor did not do that for me I wouldn't be here today talking to you guys going through this uh, strategies for distance learning so one of the things that you can also do online is because I would understand it would be very hard to check attendance of your students when you do distance learning and later on i'll be talking more about like how you could like move things along uh, if for example you're facing an offline situation then you can you know do these activities as a means to actually take attendance because if students need to complete learning tasks then you could see how they're progressing and how they are actually uh, participating in your class so as i've been mentioning the last couple of slides the important thing to do is to integrate hands-on activities because when you do distance learning um, is very different from when you are in class you could actually see your students um, being engaged um, you need to integrate a lot more hands-on activities uh, so that you know the students can participate more and alam naman natin the students of today their attention span is very very low right so you need to use many different tools in order to keep them engaged and you can actually uh, integrate analog you know creation like you think getting the students to use photos or videos and having them upload that to their work either on slide doc or google classroom okay second part of uh, this uh, session is to talk about how do you assess student learning Okay, so one of the things that you can use, and a lot of uh, teachers and professors, as they're learning how to use all of these things, they normally easily start with Google Forms and quizzes. They don't even like jump into Google Classroom yet. Uh, get your feet wet and just try to use Google Forms and quizzes first. So with forms, you can use this to engage students in discussion about learning topics or like having dialogues with them during uh, like during your lessons. Or you can use this as an anchor as discussion starters for your lesson. So as I mentioned earlier, like the online means was really very effective for me to learn further because i prefer to read and write actually rather than to present okay so another one as i mentioned earlier you can use is slides q a to you know like encourage students to ask questions siguro dun, dun din kasi ako never nagkulang yung magtanong na magtanong na magtanong 
tanong. <laughs> like, if there's something I don't understand, I always ask questions. But if it's something that I feel I could digest, I will just stay quiet and stay quiet. But, you know, like, encouraging people to ask questions, like, online is a good value to have for your students, okay? Another one that you can use in order to engage your students and, you know, assess them on how they develop is through Google Classroom discussions. I know of a school in the Philippines, they've been using this um, for their homeroom classes. So one of the homeroom teachers told me that what she's been doing is at least, you know, like once a week, she would throw out a question on their Google, homeroom Google Classroom and the students would, you know, continue discussion. So like one of the favorite, uh, like usual starter discussions at the beginning of class is, what did you do during last summer? So um, like year on year out, you need to write an essay on what you did last summer. And oftentimes you need to also, you know, go in front and read your essay to let your classmates know what you did last summer. But you could actually do this fairly quickly. And because you're not seeing your students in person right now, and you can do this also even during um, class, is to, you know, like do those starter discussions. It doesn't need to be like something very no split can be as simple as what's your favorite dessert or what's your favorite fruit or like what you did during the pandemic how did you cope for it okay and then of course there's google classroom assignments which you can uh, use to give your students homework and this would allow you to also see like What's the mastery level of students? If you're having, you know, the difficulty thinking about like, how can I, how can I actually, you know, like start this? It may be hard. One, you can, you know, look at what other teachers have been doing. There's certainly a lot of content online and you use Google search to find those things or like you could actually also look at some of the available content online. So I understand DepEd has DepEd Commons. They have quite a lot of lessons there. And I know a lot of teachers from DepEd had been actually downloading things from the LRMDS and re-uploading it into Google Classroom. Another thing that you can use also, Google has a lot of available content uh, on teaching computer science, even uh, digital learning skills. And these things you could easily integrate into your Google Classroom. Okay. Another means um, to assess, you know, your students is to use Google Hangouts Meet, diba? And with Google Hangouts Meet, you can run your lessons through this. And of course, parents down the line will need to also be briefed how to use all these things because she lay your actual on-ground support for your students. And you can record meetings and uh, you can also host appointment slots. Let's say you want to talk to your to the parents of the students. So how do you actually like set up hangout meet meets? It's very easy. You could actually just simply also one way go to Google Calendar and then book your meeting there, and then make sure you add like a video conference, and that's. That's what creates the Hangouts Meet. Or you can use Google Classroom to create your um, individual Hangouts Meet. So one of the things that we've integrated into Google Hangouts Meet or Google Meets is closed captioning. So let's say, for example, diba kung mahili kayo manood ng YouTube, nakikita nyo sa baba usually may subtitles, diba? Like, it's either... Uh, it writes out kung ano yung sinasabi ng mga 
pinapanood niya sa video or it helps translate also. So initially, when I was doing those webinars for other countries, uh, I had an issue of helping Korean teachers because majority of our content is in English. And the teacher said like, actually, gusto namin pinapanood yung mga videos from Japan. And I said to them, like, how do you understand what they're saying? So they said, oh, we turned on the subtitle function of YouTube and from Japanese, it translates to Korean. So similarly, uh, Google Meets, what it has available is closed captioning. So this helps, you know, with students who have hearing disabilities and also you can turn that the student can switch on like whatever language they want to uh, like read uh, the subtitles on, it will help those students who are multilingual. Although for Philippines, what we have is Filipino. So if you're training in English, you could actually translate it to Filipino. Okay. And then you could record meets. So let's say, for example, you have students who don't really have internet at home, diba? So malaking problema yan. So what you can do is you could record your videos and then the students at the latter time can actually, you know, if they go to a place with Wi-Fi, they can download and watch it offline when they go home or like they can just simply rewatch when they go to a place that has Wi-Fi, <clears throat> okay? So another thing that you can use is Google Calendar. So Google Calendar appointments, uh, this is where you can hold office hours. This is where you can um, set up your lessons like to use Google Meets. And <clears throat> an important thing that we encourage teachers to do as well is to allot some time for office hours. So this office hours, you could allow your students or even like, you know, parents to meet with you online. So I know like it's very important to give feedback, you know, to parents about the uh, progress of your students or like it's, very, it's a tool that you can also use to reach out and talk to parents if there are some things or like concerns you have about their children. So another thing, like another section that we'd like to go through today is uh, to include social emotional learning in your design. So uh, the pandemic certainly has been very difficult for all of us. In Japan, actually, the teachers there, they are required to call each and every student they have every single day. So in Japan, ginagawa nila yun every day. And I'm like, how do they actually do that? And my colleagues are telling me, tinatawagan talaga nila yung estudyante nila araw-araw to check. But something that you can do, which I would have absolutely loved when I was a student, is, you know, to use, create a Google form and check on your students' well-being. So you can ask them to, you know, like uh, submit siguro their emotional state, but then you like integrate the mga emoticons. Um, and then you can check, you know, if you look at the responses, you turn on conditional formatting to highlight which of your students probably need additional outreach for. So that's something that you can do with mood check-in, here's a sample of like a form that you can use, like ask them if they're happy, they're nervous, they're sorrowful or irate or angry and ask them like, what well, do you feel this way? And encourage them to take action by, you know, like encouraging them to create a goal for the day. So, and give them an option whether they'd like to talk to you as their teacher, yes or no. I think maybe I should do this for my team, actually. Uh, so, and when you look at your responses, this is more or less how it actually looks. So, 
I'm just checking kung fina-flag na ako ni Check, kung masyadong mahaba na to. Another thing that you can do is to also use Blogger for personal journaling. So, when I was a professor at uh, De La Salle University more than 10 years ago, I actually had my students use Blogger for personal journaling. Uh, but what I asked them to do was to actually learn something new every single week. And then that's what they had to write about every single week. I was teaching a comms class and I wanted them to understand that when you're in communications, you're actually required to write every single day. So, but you know, you can use Blogger for personal journaling to have them, uh, you know, just vet and like write out what they're actually feeling. I've been actually doing this since January 1, because alam naman natin, like in early January, we had the Taal volcano which erupted. And to, you know, like center and focus myself every single day at night before I sleep, I would actually journal. And I've been using Blogger to do that one. Number five is to think beyond the clock, diba? So, sanay na sanay tayo, like when we train, we use, we follow the school hours. Like, kunyari yung class mo is 9 to 10 or 10 to 11. Lahat yun ganon. But, you know, you need to think beyond the clock. It has to be more project-based learning. So, what you can do is you can anchor your lessons to, you know, show ano ba yung dapat output meron yung estudyante nyo. So like when we actually, when we were doing those Google Teacher Workshops a couple of years back in the Philippines, each section had an expected output, you know, from those teachers who were joining our training. So um, things you need to do is like anchor the students on an output tied to the goal that you have for that specific lesson. So, then you need cut, cut, cut. And if you're able to do this, you're basically training, you know, your students to be a program manager because that's what we do. Program managers, we have specific goals and then those goals we, like, divide up based on specific output at every check-in turn, diba? And something that you can do is you could actually do a choose your own adventure in Google Classroom. And nung bata ako, favorite book ko yung choose your own adventure. So, and because it allows, you know, the students to also learn how to make decisions. And as you do, you know, choose your own adventure, the students are given a choice. And from, you know, how your students choose their own adventure, like, what's the best way to engage the students? Or like, what's the best way to actually make them learn? So this is like, I've only learned this uh, recently, but I think it's a good option and it makes things more exciting for the students to learn. So, like as I mentioned earlier, there's closed captions on Google Meets um, and you can use this in your slides also just to make sure that your students can learn more. In the Philippines, though, we have Filipino as our anchor language and, of course, English. So, para mas mabilis din matuto yung mga estudyante. Okay? Okay, so what about the issue of not having internet? And this is a huge issue that we have everywhere, not just in the Philippines, but everywhere so one of the things that you can do is to actually share recordings for make up work so you cannot expect all students to attend a live you know like lesson that you do on google meets because they may not have wi-fi um but 
they're probably able to, you know, like connect to the internet every so often. So what you can do is actually record your lessons, save them on Google Drive, give it as homework on Google Classroom and have the student like watch your lesson and then make sure to anchor an output to it so that you can assess whether they actually got what you were trying to teach, okay? Another one is offline slides. So um, the same way, if a student doesn't have internet at home, but could get to a place where they could actually like just download things, you could encourage them to enable offline slides so that let's say bumisita sila sa kapitbahay, internet, they're able to like, you know, save the slides or like it it's made available offline on their computer or their phone even or their tablet then you can you know when they go back home they could just easily review those slides that you have sent them they could actually create their homework also through that and then just re-upload when they have internet already so they don't need to have like internet 24 hours a day. So even you as teachers, of course, concerned po kasi hindi naman kayo palaging may internet. Could just probably be just connecting on your phone, connecting your device on your phone, or you could even create things using your phone. So you could pre-record your lessons and save them on Google Drive. You can use your phone to record, or you could use if you have a camera, which I've been doing, uh, I record stuff and then I upload on my YouTube account or like I upload on my Google Drive if, if it has to be private. And the students can then just download, you know, these videos like when they have internet. They may, might be in school or maybe kung saan man sila makadaan na may internet. Okay. And of course, you need to communicate your plan with families so don't leave them out of the blind so we have what you call google sites which is part of g suite for education and you can also use your gmail account for this create a google sites or google groups or do google meets so with google sites you could actually create one you know, for your class, a lot of teachers do this. And you can also create, you know, a separate Google Sites for teachers or for parents, or like the school can take the initiative to do this and create the Google Sites where they can put all information where parents can go to to understand, like, how can my kids actually learn? Diba? And they can also embed a calendar. Because I think the important for parents is to know when should their kids actually join class. Kailan ba yon? So, kasi kung bata ka, diba? And if you're naughty, siguro itatako mo yan sa magulang mo. <laughs> but um, you can actually do this. You can create a Google Sites page for your class. Or, you know, the school can take the initiative and gather up everything, you know, under one Google Sites that can be shared to parents. And then, of course, there's Google Groups. So, like, if you're able to gather up the emails of your, uh, of the families or, like, the guardians of the students, then you can create a Google Group and send announcements to them. And if, let's say, for example, you're hosting a class, then you can just send an announcement to all parents or guardians of the students to understand, like, if they have a class or if they, you have any announcements about the closure of schools. So another thing is, of course, using Google Meets, as I mentioned earlier, for appointment slots for parent meeting. So I think communication is always key. So kahit kami, we have regular sync ups as a team just to check on each other, regular sync ups about what's happening. So, uh, and, 
Yeah, minsan nababasa niyo siya sa news ko na yung ginagawa ng mga boss namin to take care of us. At the same way, you as a teacher, you also need to, you know, be open and provide like a means for your parents to reach out to you through, you know, doing appointment slots for parent meeting, meetings. And then fin finally, other things that you need to consider is, of course, supporting your school ecosystem. Right? You have your teacher unions, you have like, you know, those things you need to understand and like show your teachers how to use all this online stuff. Right? But uh, it's not easy for teachers to just like shift over from doing face-to-face -face classes to you know doing distance learning hindi is automatic and us at google we understand that and that's the reason why we have a lot of tools that could help teachers and you can certainly reach out to either our communities the google educator groups or our professional development partners but the good news is like you know, across the Philippines, there's quite a number of Google certified educators and trainers that you can tap for help to help teach your school how to use those things, right? Okay, so these are just some tips, you know, especially for principals to consider as they shift over to um, distance learning. One is your teacher union. Siguro check ano ba nangyayari sa mga kontrata ng teacher nyo. Or like, two, you need to also see what are the modifications and accommodations you need to teach. If, if you're a school that have like children who may have, you know, accessibility issues or who may have like physical challenges, then you need to consider and understand what are modifications and accommodations you need to do to be able to make what you're doing more inclusive. And then, of course, teacher training, there's a lot of content. Like uh, we have this site called now teachfromhome.google which nakasulat sa name ko. Um, or you could just simply search for Google Teacher Center or search for Google for Education. You'll see all like the gazillion of links that we have available out there so that you can learn. Uh, you, we have a Google Teacher Center which can get you through like step-by-step -step how to use all these tools. And of course, um, we have quite a lot of things available for uh, schools, for universities, for teachers to learn. Our main platform is G Suite for Education. And for those who uh, like are interested, we also have a device called Chromebooks. Uh, I did not cover much of it right now, but our Chromebooks are like amazing like devices and of course also very cheap and it makes it easy for schools to manage um and for, for you to learn we have the google teacher center and i think you might want to write this down like if there's one thing you need to search to further your studies just search for google teacher center everything is there or if you want the shortcut just go to teachfromhome.google and you can get to all those, you know, like things. So our educator communities in the Philippines have also created quite a lot of uh, content and webinars for you to learn. And I think they're planning another tranche of webinars uh, this month. Um, and you can just go to gg.gg slash gsfe webinars 2020. Nandito siya, it's the next page. So we have quite a lot of, you know resources that you can look at and i suggest like you know be curious and act on that curiosity if you think uh using our google for education platform is what you think would be best for your uh school or your class then i strongly suggest you read up more about it or like you watch more you know of the webinars the youtube videos that we have on the google for education channel so that you can actually learn 
much more quickly. So earlier, I mentioned about Google Meets being like the premium services that we have available for G Suite Enterprise for Education, specifically Google Meets um, is available up until September 30, 2020. After that, it will revert back to your regular G Suite for Education free version, but you could certainly still use Google Meets up to 100 people. Okay, so we're ready for questions. Ms. Eileen, let me just um, share our screen now. Okay, for the Q&A. Okay. Just... Um, wait for a while, it's just still sharing. Uh, Ms. Eileen, Google Docs, yes. Okay, so um, once again, we, we thank Mom Eileen for uh, that very enriching presentation about the potential of using G Suite for education. Um, it really makes our lives easier, especially if um, our work later on will be on remote teaching and learning. Uh, we'll just give some few reminders on how for us to participate in the q a well at the bottom of your screen you have some icons there okay and what you need to do if you would want to ask the question and you would as well would want all of us to see your face and hear your voice you have to first click um, the raise hand icon and that's the time we will make you a presenter Okay, we'll start with Miss Nika. Miss Nika, you can enable your mic. Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Miss Nika, you can ask the question to Miss Aileen. Okay, if you're, you're quite shy, you can type in your question in the chat message. Miss Nika, you're, are you ask, are going to ask some questions? Uh, okay, um, let me now remove you for a moment as a, make you a, as a participant. I will now put in Miss Alea as the next person to ask questions. Miss Leia, go ahead with your audio. Hello, man. Good morning, Paul. Uh, Ms. Lian, uh, Mr. Lian, yes, go ahead, Bo. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Go ahead, sir, with your question. Sir Lian, you can use your mic to ask questions for Ms. Alien. So if you're having a problem, you can use the chat as well. You can type your question here. Uh, Miss Aileen, are you able to see the question in the chat okay. area? Yes. Okay, so if we require students to upload a file, my specific lang pong bang file size or unlimited siya. So if you're using G Suite for Education, wala naman siyang uh, limits for file size. So if there are any limits, what it will follow will be Google Drive 
minutes. Let me look for it. So if you're using your regular Gmail account, you have about 15 gig uh, space on Google Drive. Wait, uh, I'm just checking. Or this is Google Groups. But yeah, like if there are any possible limits, the limits will be curtailed with the maximum limits of Google Drive. So if you search for uh, the phrase Google Drive limits, you could see the Google Drive help page, like outlining all the limits. But I think like, um, kung sa mga bata, if you're, they're just uploading like short videos or like photos, I don't think it's going to hit any of the limits that you have. Hindi siya yung tulad ng mga like uh, sinaunang panahon na accounts na up to 200 MB lang yung pwede mo email sa tao. Tapos bigla meron ka ng uh, like error message that the mail service is full. So, so far hindi nangyayari sa atin. You could also check specifically, just search for Google Drive limits and click on the like help page link. It defines all the specific limits. But I think with your students, like it shouldn't like hit that limit. Because like in my 14 years at Google, I've never reached that limit. <laughs> okay, Miss Eileen, we have Sir RV Boy as our next uh, participant. Go ahead, Hello, Sir Arfi. Hello, Arfi. Hello, good morning, ma'am. Um, I appreciate how comprehensive and informative you're sharing to us this morning. Um, this discussion actually will be very helpful for me personally because in our school, in Kuleo San Agustin, Makati, um, one of our defaults will be Google for Education, aside from, mm -hmm. aside from the LMS that we are actually using. So we have actually two. So we have um, the LMS and we will try to maximize our use for, for Google. My question is that um, since you have mentioned that there are that we can also record videos, right? You see mm. Google. Um, is there any um, features for the video where we can put some text, um, some elements, graphics or pictures? That's number one. I think you can do some editing of videos. Uh, you could actually use either YouTube. Uh, YouTube has a creator studio that you can use to create, you know, all those additional stuff. Um, another thing that I've been personally using is also Google Photos for like basic, super basic uh, video editing. But if, for example, there are, you know, effects that you want to put, I would suggest that you use um, some of the available apps. So, like, if you go to the Chrome Web Store or Google Play, just search for video editing tools. There's quite a lot that are for free. And then you can, like, you know, add it as an extension or, or as an app on your oh, okay. browser. Uh, that's one. Uh, but personally, what I use uh, for my uh, YouTube channel is WeVideo. <laughs> and we you can videos. also that. Yeah, WeVideo. <clears throat> or like if you're just editing graphics, uh, I know Canva Philippines has also made their services free for education. So just search for that page, Canva. It's like a... Like it's good for graphics also. I'm not sure if they have video, but you can check. And uh, as long as you have uh, an education account, uh, they allow you to use it for free. But okay. like, uh, just go to the Chrome Web Store or Google Play and search for video editing tool. Madami din to. Thank you, ma'am. One second question, okay. po. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any 
feature in the Google Form where we can off the copy paste or may copy paste po ba yung Google Form kasi for answering an essay questions for example we will conduct assessment specifically with my with my subject Christian living education it's not their objective so um, most of the time I'm asking them essay questions so for now that it will be a distance learning most likely I will be maximizing Google for for assessments for formative and summative but I want also to train them to really um, use their own thoughts in answering questions so my default my feature po ba tayo, we can take off the, the copy paste <clears throat> I think uh, what we have in Google is what we call the Google Originality Report. So, when you search for Google Originality Report, it will bring you to the page of Google for Education uh, talking about the Originality Reports feature. So, this is a feature that will check the content that the students submit for possible plagiarism. So this is like, um, if you have a G2 for education, it's like the free one. Meron siyang like way for you to test using it. Um, but if you're using the G Suite Enterprise for Education version, the paid version of G Suite for Education, kasama doon yung feature ng originality reports. And the copy-paste function, well, mahirap naman i-off yun. But I think if, for example, you're using Chromebooks, I think possibly pwede siya as a policy. But that's gonna be hard, especially for teachers that are, you know, doing some work. The best option for you to use is the originality reports feature of Google for Education. So this is fairly new. We only announced it, I think, like, uh, late uh, last year. Uh, but you can try it if you have um, a Google for Education G Suite deployment for your school. I suggest magbasakaren about it. Just search mm -hmm. Google for Education originality reports. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Eileen. Thank you, Sir okay. RV. Okay, let's have Miss Danica. Miss Danica, Hello. you can... Hello. Yes. Go ahead, Po. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Good morning, ma'am. Good, good morning. Ma'am, ma may, may question lang po ako, ma'am. Kasi, ma'am, um, nag-try nag din po ako ng another app aside from the Google app, G, G Suite. For education, ma'am. Pero mm -hmm. ang tanong ko lang kasi ma'am is, ano ba yung advantage, mas advantage pa ba yung Google app kaysa sa ibang app like Microsoft po? So, um, we don't really compare ourselves to other platforms. <laughs> yes, but what I could say is um, Google for Education platform, we have a really full ecosystem available wow. for schools. So because Google for Education is like, we, we have several platforms. We have GC for Education. We have Chromebooks. And the way that we actually design these platforms is for it to be you know, open. So I actually have, you know, ministries of education using G Suite for Education na deploy nila like nationwide. And mm -hmm. because uh, it's it's easy, you know, for them to give accounts to all their teachers and students because it's for free. Um, they're able to also utilize this as their um, you know, SSO login for all the other platforms that they have, that they are actually using. But the way we design, you know, like our platforms is to make it open. And I like see- friendly user ko ba, ma'am? Yung Alem. Google app? Uh, mas friendly user ko ba yung Google yes. app? Yes. Okay. So, kasi like, uh, when you use uh, G Suite for Education, if you're using Gmail, it's essentially like you know the same thing but what it does and what it makes it easier for 
teachers and students to start using is because it's very similar to what you use as a consumer program. And, yes, but, you know, for the school, it's advantageous for them to use GC for education because they could enforce policies, um, you know, to protect their students. And that's mm -hmm. the big thing. And then on the other hand, apart from this, you know, very basic platforms that we have, we have like a very large ecosystem out there. So you have, you enjoy the ability of using Google Play or like the Chrome Web Store. And there's like a gazillion developers out there creating education apps that people can use. Because the platform name it's it's your productivity platform, but you know, like the icing on top of it are all the other applications that you can use through the same system. Right? So like, if you look, if you just go to the Chrome Web Store and go to Google Play, there's so much like stuff that you can use from it. And then there's a lot of, you know, content that you could also just, you know, take and integrate into what you are actually doing. So um, I must say, like, you know, that's our advantage. Our ecosystem is certainly, you know, full. And the way we've designed our system is to be open. So much mm -hmm. so if they are, like, using a different elements, you could easily, like, connect it to your Google Classroom. So because that's just how we are at Google. We try to make everything that we do useful and easy to use for mm -hmm. um my another question pa po ako. yes ma'am um actually ma'am here in sabuanga city i'm from sabuanga city po ma'am sa mindanao um in the institution of university de sabuanga po i'm a, i'm a private instructor so so, bale, ma'am, we always use Google Classroom, Google Docs, and Google Sheets. But may may tendency kasi, ma'am, kapag nagbibigay po kami ng, like, the link for the Google Form for to be able to, to, oh, hello, ma'am, hello? Yes. Okay. To be able the students to answer, ma'am. Minsan din kasi, ma'am, may nakaka, parang, May, na, may nakalagay, ma'am, uh, nag-appear po, ma'am, siya ng permission, ask for me permission, like that, ma'am. May tendency may nagkakaproblema din po yung Google. Uh, ah, because it yes, probably means you did not turn on the function for it to be accessible publicly. Kasi like, when you mm -hmm. create documents, spreadsheets, yes. or forms, and specifically for forms, you mm -hmm. don't just, you know, copy-paste the link to share to your students yes, you yes. Need to look at your settings and make mm -hmm. sure to turn on the function that anybody can access the form this okay. is probably what your university has done is naka enforce yung default policies malamang. because when you create a document it is automatically accessible by anyone you need to share it so you so, need to turn on okay. the settings to allow people to access the form. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank Copy paste mo lang yun to turn on the setting. Okay, thank you, Miss Danica. Yeah. Um, our next would be Miss Shin. Can you enable Hi. your mic? Good morning. Good morning, Paul. Thank you, Miss Eileen, for, for your comprehensive discussion. So uh, I'd like to say first that uh, I'm a happy user of uh, Google and all its uh, products, especially for education. Um, Thank you. Paul. Yeah, um, I, I I would like to just uh, ask about the the status of uh, the feature on muting and unmuting, because right now we are we are conducting actually a training for. Our, faculty and uh, the mute and unmute feature seems to be just um, depending on each participant 
So I've mm. read about it, and it says it's it's in the it's in the process of uh, study, I guess. So I'd like to fi find out or ask from you, uh, what's the status of this feature? Um, I'm not exactly sure what kind of feature you're looking for. Are you uh, talking of like Google Meet the, the machine? Yeah, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I didn't I didn't, I didn't mention. Yeah, Google Meet po. Like the facilitator uh sana can mute and unmute the, the participants like all together so that if one participant misses to unmute uh, her microphone, then the facilitator herself can do that. Actually, alam ko pwede. Kasi pag may Google Meets meetings kami. Yeah, usually you can. But uh, probably, you know, what you could do is if you could search for uh, Google Meets Mute and Unmute, it will bring you to a page, like a help page on how to uh, pin or like mute or unmute like a participant. Uh, there is information on that page uh, to guide you how to usually because you can mute but the um, like the ability to unmute themselves falls on the participant and I know like I think in other video conference uh, platforms you can unmute person or like ginagawa nila na you moderator can unmute you so what i suggest if if you like if you have um an idea or like have feedback about specific products and this goes out for everybody else at every page of our platform there is a link at the bottom right uh send feedback about you know the product so I suggest you submit that because that's how our engineering reviews whether there are specific features that should that are you know like uh, should be prioritized for development. So like the last I think two months there was a lot of new things that they pushed out on Google Meets like the grids view, uh, and I'm really happy that. Finally, it's up and running because agad na tignan nung nakagrid lahat nung kausap ko, di ba? Nakikita mo yung reaction na faces nila. But for this specific feature that you're looking for, I encourage you to like go to Google Meets or like go to a page on the Help Center and, you know, click on the send feedback so that engineering can see what, uh, additional features users want and if there are you know enough users asking for it then they will consider to prioritize development for that feature yeah uh, actually i read the page already in the support uh, google mm -hmm. support and i've read also a thread that uh just like what you said uh, i think it's already in the pipeline so uh, right now, uh, we, we cannot really do that as a facilitator to unmute everybody at one time. Yeah, so, so if, I mean, if there's yeah. that that they're working yeah. on it, they're probably working on it. And normally this, uh, because this is a feature request, uh, usually like probably engineering has it in the pipeline and they're still probably getting to it. It's just been like a really extraordinary time with so many people using our tools right now and they they are hearing you so if the status that you found says that they're still working on it then okay thank you miss eileen thank yeah. you Binsa Pels, miss chet thank you thank you miss okay next po miss nika miss nika uh, she also typed questions ah, okay. in the chat Perfect. message. Okay. Will you recommend Google Meet and Google Classroom for teachers, uh, teacher preschool pupils? Because it's very challenging for us to actually go with the online teacher with them. Thank you and God bless. It's really hard. Like, 
before. And I've been getting a lot of questions uh, related to managing preschool pupils. So I think like something that you need to think about is um, as you assess whether you want to use Google Meets and Google Classroom, I think you need to be very clear about what your goals are for reaching out to these preschool pupils. Like, be very clear, define what is it that you want your preschool pupils want to learn. And from that, that's where you determine like, okay, if let's say, gusto mo bigyan yung bata ng homework to draw an apple or a coconut tree, uh, like how will you actually do it? Do you need to have a Google Meets instance to do that? Or can you just give it as a Google Classroom homework for those kids and then, you know, send it out to their parents to initiate, diba? Kasi mahirap talaga, like for very young kids to go online, they're going to need the help of their parents. So, but I think as you plan for any deployment or like use of technology in the classroom, where you should actually start is to define what exactly is your goal you know, for learning for your students. And then from that goal, that's what you use to figure out like what kind of technology should you use to be able to engage your students, whatever age they may be. Okay, uh, I'm really sorry that we need to move to the next part of our program. Um, at this point, we will be calling in some um, health members to be able to provide us with the synthesis. We will start with uh, Sir Sandro, Sandro Alexi Nieto. He is an learning specialist from the USC College of Science Educational Technology Center. Sir Nieto. Uh, wait, um, let me locate him among all of the participants. So while I'm doing that, maybe I'll proceed with Miss uh, Pearl Sheila Ledespa from BNET. Hi there. Good morning uh, from Bacolod City. Practically, our distinguished speaker has um, explored, um, immersed, and has covered, okay, what should be uh, learned about this distance um, education. But anyway, uh, this is Sheila Christine Ledesma, and I am an educational consultant for Blackboard and Open Element. I represent BNET, an international software industry in Singapore, which partners with leading software and customers, especially in the higher education institutions. So BNET is a Blackboard and Open LMS partners. So Ms. Eileen, you are there in Singapore. I am here in the Philippines, uh, but representing BNET Singapore. So I have been a professor of English, language, and literature with significant years of experience in higher education institutions uh, and in graduate school. So as the strategic education consultant, I am focusing on institutions in the Philippines facing complex pedagogical innovations where I specialize in assisting tertiary education institutions so that they will be able to gain the best out of this active learning and shaping strategy plan and key e-learning initiatives for their institutional success. So again, I am immensely pleased to join you all in this space as we um, explore how distant learning is like during a coronavirus outbreak using the pedagogical approaches, which may be uh, contextualized in strategies supported by online learning environments. We um, all know that the COVID-19 uh, or coronavirus continues to spread. Schools around the globe are shifting to online learning in an effort to slow the spread of the disease. So we have PELS, 
with us and all other professional learning networks, which have been hard at work identifying key practices to successful online learning. So it was really an insightful and interesting presentation by our distinguished speaker of today, Eileen Apollo uh, de Jesus. I must say it is, again, a culmination of your years of work with educational sectors, being an educator yourself. Um, incidentally, I was also connected with University of St. LaSalle here in Macaulay. So we are the green uh, people. So here, um, Eileen details how educators who found themselves teaching in a distant learning situation, especially if it's been foisted upon them by circumstance, and G Suite productivity tools is like a complete solution to engage remotely. So distance learning today has gained its momentum both in popularity and effectiveness among those who have not got the opportunity to join formal mode of education due to various reasons like inadequate time or financial hardship. And now it is strongly considered by many in this unprecedented, you know, unprecedented, unparalleled and unmatched times. So despite this, it is felt that the system of distance learning can be made more effective and result oriented too in our context and in the Philippine education system. There are some new innovative strategies which I believe our speaker has identified, which can be developed to be included in the system, which is being analyzed also and highlighted during this session. So while Eileen has recommended full strategies in her presentation and maybe before we proceed with them we can also check with our academic institution to make sure the tools comply with the specific policies for age education level or mastery level privacy and whatnot my uh, synthesis is through the lens of distance learning launched by a global pandemic I am attempting to broaden the lens beyond our current situation um, to take other distance situations into account. So distance learning offers different challenges from face-to-face -face instruction, and I hope you would agree to that. So in fact, if you look online, you'll find a myriad of resources that can help you tackle those challenges so much that it's easy to get paralyzed at the volume of it all. So I'm going to take my best shot at sharing clear, carefully curated, you know, information um, on distance learning, of course, inspired by the presentation of our speaker today. So um, let's do some five points here. Um, one, get perspective. There will likely be times when the people in charge of you start to expect too much or you expect too much of yourself, which I do that most of the time. So if you're in a situation like the one that is happening to be in right now, you may need to regularly step back from what's right in front of you and uh, remember that we're dealing with life and death circumstances right now. So none of this is normal and there is no precedent to follow. So um, most people are doing the best they can on any given day. And that means things will not go smoothly. And when I say people, I mean everyone, students, parents, your colleagues, your administration, your family members, but most especially you, the educator. So we need something to help us regain perspective and cut ourselves some slack. So we use resources available for you, like YouTube, blogs, webinars, and other editorials. Moving forward, we have to get with other people. So one way to alleviate this is to get in touch with others who are more familiar with your specific needs. Apart from collaborating with your colleagues, a great way to share ideas is to find and join online groups. So maybe I'm recommending, you know, our second online home, which is Facebook and user groups, and then get everything organized. That would be number three. Um, ideally, you and your colleagues will have chosen a single platform for storing and delivering assignments. 
or collecting student work or posting announcements and so on. So many schools are already set up on the learning management systems like Blackboard Learn or OpenLMS and other providers and of course G Suite for Education. So um, creating a central hub should be a priority. What parents and students are saying most often is that it's incredibly stressful to have to keep up with multiple platforms and um, multiple streams of information with some pieces coming through email, others through Facebook, others through an LMS, and so on. So with many things going on in our personal and professional lives, things can get on, you know, can get out of hand very fast. So it's perfectly fine to use different tools as part of your instruction, but for communication, keep things as streamlined as possible. The fourth will be uh, get a lesson design. On principle that I've seen in several discussions of online learning is the idea that it works better when you give students some choices, choices in how they take information in, and choices in how they demonstrate learning. And I thank you, Aileen, for presenting that earlier. So um, the entire degree programs have been created to show teachers, for example, how to design lessons on learning. So maybe we can find resources to assist us, to assist you, which you find it helpful. And the last is get options for delivering content. One of the main things you need to do when setting up online instruction is figuring out how students are actually going to take in the content. You may have a few options and it's a good idea to not stick to one avenue since you ideally want to give students multiple modes of intake. So in the discussion here, we were actually um, reminded that we can, you know, have readings, we can bleed the text, we have the reg regular PDFs, PDFs with annotation tools, websites, we can also visit videos or do some static slide presentation, check on the slideshows that combine text with appealing visuals. And with alternative to text readings, we also are encouraged uh, by Eileen to have the interactive learning experiences. So. Speaking of interactive learning experiences, these are some tools that have come along in recent years that allow you to create interactive online learning modules where students click through various instructional components, play games, interactive quizzes, and so on and on and on. And here's a takeaway for teachers who are attending this um, webinar today. If distance learning has been introduced suddenly, or it takes the place of face-to-face -face learning. Rather than being the standard from the start, treat the beginning of the shift the same way you treat the beginning of a school year, by establishing routines and protocols before digging deeply into content and giving extra energy to uh, rekindling culture and relationships on the new platform, even if they were already established in the face-to-face -face setting. So with this, we are trying to reimagine how we teach and how our students learn. So that's it. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Miss Pearl. Um, that was really a, a, a very nice synthesis. We, we would like to call on Sir Sandro Nieto. Um, are you online now? Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi, 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 uh, Sir Sandro. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, Miss Sir. <laughs> uh, this opportunity for us gave us a lot of insights, most especially about using the Google Suites for educators, because although we may have different platforms or uh, learning management system in our university or schools, I'm glad that the Google Suites was uh, was given the opportunity to show its highlights, like from increase, increase in the opportunities for engagement, uh, frequently assessment of the students' learning, extending with Hangouts, and all those stuff. Uh, I one thing I appreciate most about 
about the talk of Miss Eileen is although we as although we as starting or in the have already started using online platform, we may have missed the inclusion of emotional learning in design. So we may have given them instructions on how to do this, how to do that regarding our lessons and the formal assessments. One thing we may lack is the social emotional learning of the students. So I would like to commend personally that part of this talk uh, because I think that's one important uh, aspect in learning and as well as as well as the communication plan with the families. So since we are just dealing with students these days, uh, inclusion of their parents might have been neglected. So I'm glad that this was enlightened also by, by Ms. Eileen in her talk. And then um, regarding the resources, I'm glad that there are some websites that's that were shared like the teachercenter.google.com and then teachfromhome.google because for most especially for beginners i think this will give uh more opportunities for the tools which we may use in our future learning materials thank you po All right. thank you sir uh, sandro thank you miss pearl um that was really a good synthesis. I must agree with the uh, Prof Nieto about the social emotional um, aspect of the presentation. It's really important, especially for um, learners who are new to the this uh, uh, online environment. It it could be uh, a little uh, a little bit stressful for everybody, not only for students but for teachers as well. Okay, at this point, um, as a as uh, an appreciation to our distinguished um, speaker for this morning. We would like to um, award the Certificate of Appreciation to Ms. Eileen Apollo de Jesus for selfishly sharing her expertise on the topic Distance Learning Strategies Using G Suite and Chromebook. Today, May 15, 2020, Manila, Philippines, and our certificate is signed by our president, uh, Associate Professor Anna Sheryl Ramos, and yours truly, uh, Danny Mariano, Vice President. Thank you very much, Ma'am Eileen, for the, uh, the very insightful and very informative uh, presentation that you did today. I'm sure our participants are also very thankful for the knowledge that they have gained uh, this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you all learned something from us. and. Like, just remember, if you want to learn more, just search for Google Teacher Center. Thank you, Miss Aileen. Till Thank next you. time. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So at this point, we would as well invite you to our next webinar. Um, that would be choose. So we usually do. Uh, we will be having McGraw Hill Education. And they will as well invite um, a professor from another country who will talk about their experience in remote teaching and learning. Um, service partners for those interested to jumpstart Google uh, G Suite for Education in your entire institution. Um, I have here the contact person, Ms. Maina Sabado, and the email as well as the i think this is a google form where you can uh, put there all the essential information so they could contact your school we would also thank uh, blackboard for this webinar space for using blackboard collaborate we we'll also would like to thank cypher learning and this is the the place where we will download all our certificates after the session and of course, we are powered by PLDT Smart for our webinar session. If in case uh, for some of you who were able to, who among you um, lag out during the session, um, don't worry because all of the registered participants, we will be enrolling all of you in our platform. 
and you will access the recording of this in succeeding days and that is also the time where you will as well download um your certificate okay so at this point you need to of course get the link for the evaluation as our basis for your certificate so here's the uh, link so let me now put this as well in the chat box It's a two-part evaluation. One is, of course, required, and the other one is, in fact, um, optional. So we encourage you to answer that if you are an educator. You can also use your cell phone to scan the QR code. Okay, can I wait a moment? Yes, so there. So we're just going to flash this um, just for a few minutes so that you know the link to the website. Uh, I mean, sorry, to the evaluation link. So as long as you take a snapshot of this, you can do this after the session, not necessarily that you finish it today. Okay, let me just move into the last part and then we'll just go back to this so that uh, we'll be able to cover everything that we need to, to tell you. Okay, let me just move in. Um, so, what else will happen? Just our last reminder, you will be enrolled in our online platform where you will be able to watch the recording of this session um, as well as that is also the place where you will download the certificate of attendance. So if in case you will have problems, um, you can email our secretariat, pels.secretary at gmail.com. Uh, on behalf of the Philippine E-Learning Society, we thank you very much for your active engagement today. Um, Ma'am Penny, any last words for our participants? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Eileen. Thank you, Sir Sandro and uh, Pearl as well for participating, for actively participating. We are looking forward to having you again next week. Oh, week after next <laughs> on yes, our next webinar. Yeah, and uh, do visit our Facebook group page and our web web page elearning.ph for more information and for um, other uh, stuff that you may want to know about uh, the Philippine eLearning Society. With that, magandang umaga po and have a good day. Okay, good day, everyone. Thank you, Miss Eileen. Thank you for Thank you. our invited um, uh, speakers as well for the synthesis. Okay, Thank we will you. Just, we'll just wait here for a, a little longer. If you have questions, we're going to stay up to about five minutes and then we'll end the session. Yeah, don't forget to answer the evaluation. Bye, everyone. Bye, Miss Eileen. You, Eileen. Bye, Miss Annie. Bye, Madam President. Thank Bye, you, Pearl. Mila. Thank you, Pearl. Thank you. Bye-bye.